Welcome to another episode in our Random Walks series. We have seen our uh, animated objects here, Josh and Kramer, random walking in one dimension, random walking in two dimensions, and now we see them random walking in three dimensions. So this is the uh, scenario we're going to be examining today. Uh, it's a pretty cool animation that results, so let's take a look at the code of how this is created. Um, we have the same basic setup that we had last time. We create two spheres, Kramer and Josh, um, to animate. And each time around this loop, their position is updated by a distance dx in some randomized direction. Only this time we've got six directions to pick from. We've got up and down, we've got left and right, and we've got forward or out of the screen or backwards uh, into the screen. And so with six possibilities, we have to change our random step function direction here. So just like before, we pick a random number and we're gonna compare that random number against a set of values to determine which direction to go in. So there are six possibilities. So each step has a one in six chance of being picked. So the first one is if R is less than one over six. The second one gets picked if R is uh, between one six and two six. And this one is picked if it's between two six and three six, et cetera, et cetera, on down the line. And we've got uh, each of our six possible uh, step directions. We've got a step to the right. We've got a step up. We've got a step to the left. We've got a step down. And then we have our two new steps, a step in the positive Z direction coming out of the screen and a negative Z direction going into the screen. And so this thing is gonna keep looping around and each time it's gonna to add to these two position vectors, dx times a randomized unit vector direction. So let's hit control two, take a look at it again. So again, they both start out at the origin and they begin taking different steps. And you can tell that the behavior is a lot richer than we saw for the 2D case. And in fact, what we're gonna see in another couple of videos is that these guys have a pretty low probability of ever returning to the origin. We saw for two dimensions that a random walker will almost surely return to the origin. Uh, the, the prediction is that it's 99.999% if you let it run forever and we let it run for what was that, 2,000 steps, and about 75% of them came back, which was pretty cool. Uh, that's because a two-dimensional random walk is called recurrent, but a three-dimensional random walk is called transient, where these folks only have about a 30-something percent chance of ever returning to the origin. And it's kind of a dramatic change, because um, in having a 3D space, you have more space to wander around in than you do in a 2D space. Another way of thinking about it is... Uh, if you look at this thing head on, the origin is buried somewhere deep within there. So if I just think about these guys moving along this plane in this, in this 2D random walk, uh, they very well might return to uh, zero, zero, but have a non-zero Z component. So they might think they're returning to a, a two-dimensional origin when in actuality they are far away from the three-dimensional origin. This is pretty cool animation. Um, this used to be a screensaver back in the day when we needed screensavers. Um, if you're uh, designing a maze or a Dungeons and Dragons dungeon, um, this is also a good way to design a three-dimensional space for somebody to wander around in. It's pretty cool. Uh, also good for making artwork. If you put it in an angle, you can try coloring these things in. Uh, and of course, like we've seen before, every time we run this, the results are gonna be different because we're getting random numbers uh, generated every time. Um, so now we're rolling a six-sided die, a d6 instead of a d4, um, and that's determining what direction they go in each of their steps. Now this one did, uh, 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 Josh here did loop around a little bit here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty neat behavior. Now of course, Cartesian coordinates is not the only way to go in a in 3D space. There's also spherical coordinates. So another way you can do a random walk in 3D is to use spherical coordinates. That's what I've got here in the second code we're gonna look at today. Basically what we're going to do here is look for a, is, is, is we've got the same type of thing applied. We've got a loop, uh, we've got a DX of 0.1, we're assigning a randomized direction, only this time our randomized direction can be at any angle. So when I come up here to my uh, randomize function direction, instead of taking a, a step of one in along the Cartesian axes, I'm gonna take a step of one 
along any random angle. So what we've got here is two angles. So when you're working in spherical coordinates in 3D, you need, uh, not that you can work in spherical coordinates in any other dimensions. I guess if you could do hyperspherical coordinates in four dimensions. Uh, but when you're working in 3D spherical coordinates, you need two angles. You need a theta and you need a phi. Um, phi typically runs from zero to two pi. This is the angle that's made um, in the sort of in the sort of flat plane uh, that you see in the in, in a 3D drawing, and then theta is your angle that comes down from the vertical axis, which in this case is um, uh, actually yeah yeah in this case is is our z. Um, so I'm sticking with the traditional axes, even though v pythons. Uh, X, Y, and Z axes are rotated compared to most textbooks. I'm sticking with the regular because it doesn't really matter. You're still going to get the same effect either way. The reason one of them goes from 0 to 2 pi and one of them goes from 0 to pi is so that you don't double count your angles. Um, so this one can be any angle from 0 to 2 pi and then this one just needs to go from 0 to pi in order to get a complete sphere. Otherwise you're getting two spheres and things can behave weirdly then. So what we're doing here is we're making our direction a randomized, literally a randomized direction anywhere in three dimensions. Let's see how Kramer and Josh fare with this setup. So you see here they're not constrained to move along the three-dimensional grid. They can have any angle they want um, as they move along. It's still jagged because they're still taking that uh, that, that finite step size. Now one of the things we've been looking at is how likely the random walkers are to return home. Uh, in a future video we're going to set up uh, many many um, random walkers in 3D but for right now let's make a graph of their distance from the origin just to get an idea of how likely or unlikely this is. So here we're going to graph their distance from the origin, the magnitude of their position vectors versus time Cool, so here we've got our random walk in 3D along the grid. Let's scroll down here. Um, yeah, they are they are getting farther away from the origin, generally speaking. Um, basically what we're going to see when we set up our 100 3D random walkers is that it's not terribly likely for them to end up back down here. Um, ooh, ooh, Josh is starting to turn home. Josh is, oh, now Josh is going back away. Um, let's compare this to the angled version. See if we get uh, something significantly different there. Um, so again, we'll uh, introduce a couple of graphs. Um, I'm going to remember to change time into an I this time. There we go. This is what happens when you copy and paste code together. Hey, there's our angled 3D random walkers. Ah, uh, Kramer! It did a little bit better trying to come home there. That's interesting. Of course, here, I, I have even less faith that they'll end up back at the origin because there's no guarantee that they'll ever end up back at that spot because their angles are always randomized. So I might try that. I might try both versions in the, uh, in the video where we test this out for uh, the many, many random walkers in 3D. And Kramer is, is, he's staying close to home. I think he's trying to get back home. It's hard to do in 3D. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, the next couple of videos are uh, going to be on a little bit of a lighter note. Um, we're going to try doing something creative with these random walks. Instead of just analyzing them, we're going to try to make something out of them. Um, so it'll be a couple weeks where we try to do something fun with this, and then we'll come back to 3D um, to test our many, many random walkers to test the transient result. And then we're going to end this series by taking a random walk in four dimensions, and that'll be very exciting. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.